All right, let's continue with chapter 12, just to review for you what we want to do in this chapter. Oh, still forgot to change that. Um, we talked about in the previous video, you looked at how to find the magnetic field um, produced by a current carrying wire, a long straight one. In this video, we're going to look at um, a wire carrying current, but it's in a circle. And we're also going to look at the um, how does it happen that um, wires that carry current in the same direction attract each other, and when the current goes in the opposite direction, they repel. A later um, video is going to talk about Ampere's Law. Um, again, just a quick review of what you saw in the last um, video. This was the expression that allows us to calculate through integration the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire. When you do this, you have to take things into consideration such as the direction of the magnetic field because of the fact that it is a vector. And we're going to see an example of that in, this, in the video today when we look at the magnetic field due to a circle of wire. We looked at the magnetic field due to a long piece of wire and I wanted to sort of review this because we're going to use it today and the fact that um, the magnetic field is proportional to the current but it also drops off as 1 over R. The magnetic field created by a wire is given by the right-hand rule, and it makes circles around the wire. You determine the direction that the magnetic field points on the circle by taking your thumb and placing it in the direction of the wire and the way the current's flowing in the wire. And the way that your fingers then wrap around your thumb is the way that the magnetic field wraps around the wire. Okay, so... We're told in our book that the magnetic field, uh, if you have two wires that carry current in the same direction, they will actually end up attracting each other. This is one of my sort of pet peeve phenomena in physics because I find so often students give the wrong reason for why this happens. And so I'm going to do my very best to explain to you why exactly this is true. Why is it that when the currents run in the same direction, the two wires will attract each other? And why is it that when the current runs in opposite direction, the wires will repel each other? So I think I'm going to use some color coding. And so this is going to be current one, and I'm going to make this one current two. Okay, so here we have two wires that are carrying current in the same direction. So let's talk about how do we determine that these two wires will attract each other. Well, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you that um, this is sort of explaining in words what happens. Wire one, and then I'll go through and sort of show it on the picture, will create a magnetic field in the area where wire two is. Once this happens, then we have a current carrying wire in a magnetic field so it'll feel a force.
that force, and this is the force felt by wire 2, is going to be equal to the current of wire 2 times the length of it cross with the magnetic field due to wire 1. Okay, so let's take a look at this. The magnetic field due to current 1 makes circles around current 1. Now, if I point my thumb upwards in the direction of the current, my fingers as they wrap around my hand, I notice to the right of the wire, to the right of wire number one, my fingers are pointing into the page. And so I'm going to write X's all along here to represent the magnetic field. Now I'm going to label this magnetic field 1 because it's due to the current 1. And I've also color coded it blue so that it goes with the blue current number 1. It's not really necessary, but if we use the right hand rule and pointed our thumb in the direction of the current, to the left of wire number 1, we would notice that our fingers are coming out at us. And so if we wanted to diagram the magnetic field here, we would show that it was coming out of the page. And that's B1 as well. The strength of B1 is going to be given by mu naught I1 over 2 pi R, whichever the R is, but for if we talked about the wire, one feeling it, this would be the radius we would be interested in, which would be the distance between the two, um, the two wires. So, if I now use the right-hand rule to figure out the force that current number two feels due to magnetic field one, I place my fingers in the direction of the current for wire number two, and now I want to curl my fingers into the page, and then that's doing L cross B. The direction of the force is the direction my thumb is pointing, which is going to be to the left. And if you think about it, that means that the wire number two is feeling pulled towards wire number one. We could go through the process of finding the force on wire number one, but I think maybe I want you to try that. that in that case, you would think about the magnetic field due to wire number two and what it looks like near wire number one, and then figure out what would be then the direction of the force that wire number two would feel. We could also say that through action reaction, because these two forces on either wire are an action reaction pair, the force on one is to the right. because it's also going to be attractive. All right, let's look at the example of the wires creating magnetic, uh, where the current's traveling in opposite direction. I'm going to keep this one as wire one going up. I'm going to make wire two go down. And just for kicks, this time I'm going to look at them. I'm going to look at it from the point of view of wire number two, creating the magnetic field near wire number one. So I'm going to look at the magnetic field created by wire number two, all around it. If I point my thumb down and I look at how my fingers are curling, to the left of wire number two, my fingers are curling into the page. 
And so I'm going to draw axes to represent that magnetic field that wire 2 is creating to its left. And then also noticing that if I looked on the right hand side of wire number 2, my fingers would be coming out at me. So these represent B2 because it's the magnetic field due to wire number two. Now, if I'm doing the force that wire one feels, due to the magnetic field, wire 2 would be equal to current 1 L cross B2. So now if I do my right hand rule for current number 1, I'm going to lie my fingers in the direction that the current flows. I'm going to curl my fingers into the page in the direction of the magnetic field and look at which way my thumb points. And I notice that my thumb points to the left. This is a repulsive force. And if I looked at the force that wire number two feels, then I would find that also would feel a force to the right. I can do that by going step by step through the process of finding the field due to wire number one near wire number two and then doing the right hand rule to find the direction of the force or I can do say because of the fact that these two forces are an action reaction pair the force that current two should feel should be in the opposite direction with the same magnitude as the force that wire number one feels. And now the last thing I want to do is to just look at the strength of this field. And so let's go to the next slide so we have a little bit more room. So if I have current 1, and current 2, and I did x, x, B2. The force that wire 1 feels was equal to I1 L cross B2. Now the magnitude of this force is I1 L B sine of theta, where theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the direction that the current flows. But in this scenario, theta is equal to 90 degrees. And so we can write the magnitude of the force as I1 L B. Um, and I should have put a 2 here. But if we use the expression for the magnetic field due to a long straight wire, I could substitute into this expression for the magnetic field caused by wire number two, I would have to use current two. And just kind of putting it more together, We have this expression. You see in the end, <clears throat> both the currents play a role in that force. One of the currents is because that current lies in the field. The other current is there because it's creating a magnetic field that's, that's um, acting on the other current. You notice that we use the long, the expression for a long wire for this particular scenario. 
and you also see here we have L, which represents length. Often we don't really know the length of the wire, and we say it's really long, so it makes more sense to express this in terms of a force per length, and then just writing the term, the force per length, would look like this. And that is sort of an, is an explanation of why wires that are parallel either attract or repel each other depending on the relative directions of their current flow. And here is that expression that I showed you. And the other thing that I wanted to look at in this, in this video is the magnetic field due to a loop of wire. Um, so let's just look at the orientation here of our picture. Our loop of wire is lying in the XZ plane, XZ. And then we're looking for the field due to that wire somewhere along the y-axis that passes right through the center of the circle. The circle, circular wire has a radius of large r, and the distance that we are looking away from the um, center, we're just going to call y. So one of the first things that we want to look at or think about is that when we are finding little bits of the magnetic field, we're finding dB. But we have to keep in mind that this is a vector. And what they're trying to show you here is that for every little in increment of the wire on one side of the loop, on the other side, there's a corresponding piece of wire that actually creates a magnetic field that in terms of at least one direction, in this case in the z direction, would cancel out. And so if we think about sort of going around the circle to find little pieces of wire that are opposite each other, we would actually conclude as we go around the circle the x and z components of the magnetic field will cancel. And the only, the only magnetic field that will remain when we go the whole way around the circle will be a y component. So when we're all said and done, our magnetic field that we're left with will look like this. It'll be along the y-axis. So that's just sort of thinking it through because when we do this expression, it is important to, to be aware of what is going to be the net direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so now we're going to do more of the math. So we have this expression that we were given for finding the magnetic field. Now, one of the things that we can look at, here's our R. This is R. And R is equal to the square root of Y squared plus big R squared. Because we're just using the Pythagorean theorem. This is R. This is Y. And the other thing, if we think about it, might not be as obvious, but DL and R hat are actually perpendicular to each other. That's because R just comes in right and hits DL at a perpendicular angle. And so while if we wrote the magnitude of this, it would be mu naught i dl times the sine of theta over 4 pi r squared. The sine of theta would be the sine of 90, which is, which is equal to 1. So we can write 
the GB, the vector, is equal to mu naught pi dl over 4 pi. And now I'm going to finally substitute in for the r squared, would just be y squared plus r squared. Now we have to find the y component of the magnetic field, which would be given by dBy would be given by dB times the cosine of the angle theta. Oh, and I wanted to use a different angle. I shouldn't have used theta here. I should have used alpha um, because it, this is not the angle between R and DL is not the theta that we see on the picture. So I want to change that to alpha here. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so continuing, cosine of theta is, of course, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And if we look at the picture right here, where our theta is, our adjacent side is r, and our hypotenuse is y squared plus r squared to the one-half. So dby can be written as mu naught i times r over 4 pi y squared plus big R squared, all that raised to the 3 halves times dl. And then I would integrate this to find the total magnetic field. When I look at this, everything is a constant. Um, except the dl, and so I could actually write this integral as mu naught i r over 4 pi y squared plus r squared to the 3 halves times the integral of dl. And this is just going to be 2 pi r, the distance around the circle. go to the next screen because we're running out of room. So what we found was B could be written as mu naught I times 2 pi R squared over 4 pi R squared plus Y squared to the 3 halves. Now in the book, we talked about the magnetic moment, which is the current times the area. And in this picture, and it is unfortunate, uh, the symbols, this is different from this permeability of free space, the mu sub naught. Um, but I just wanted to sort of adhere to the notation of your book. So this would be equal to I times pi r squared. So if we took This, these terms right here, would be equal to mu. And so we could write this as mu naught times mu times 2 over 4 pi r squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. And then we could get rid of the 2 and write it as mu naught mu, sorry, mu over 2 pi r squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. And that is the magnetic field that we found, which is in the y direction. I kind of was sloppy with my, I didn't indicate that until now. We did talk about the fact it was only in the y direction. And you see that it's exactly as this expression right here. We could ask our question, what would happen if we were at the middle of the loop, where y was equal to 0? Well, we can try. We say mu naught times mu over 4, 2 pi times r squared to the 3 halves, which is just going to be mu naught mu over 2 pi r cubed 
it might it might be more familiar if we rewrite the magnetic moment And find that in the center. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Oh yeah, I need an I. This is what the expression is for the magnetic field due to the loop of wire. I like to point it out because it's really similar to a really long straight wire, except there's no pi in the bottom. Um, and so it's just something to notice. In terms of direction of the magnetic field, we can use the right-hand rule to figure out the direction of the magnetic field due by the current loop. Again, using the easy right-hand rule, this time we wrap our fingers in the direction of the current flow, and our thumb will give us the direction of the magnetic field. And here you see two examples, and you can sort of try that to see if you can do it on your own. All right, that's it for part two of chapter 12.